Now it's hard to watch an outdoor channel show, cable TV, a hunting show, without thinking about scent control, seeing scent control, seeing scent control products, methods. It's, it's so much that it can be overwhelming. And of course, a lot of that relates to deer being downwind of you, on the stand, on a tree stand, and making sure that you could fool, your, fool their nose while you're on that tree stand and have a great hunt, right? That's what it's all about. And I'm here to say that there's a huge, giant portion of scent control that isn't covered when you're on your tree stand, and that's your access. And I want you to think about this way. Let's say someone has a 40 acre parcel. Now I get accused on my YouTube channel all the time of you know hunting thousands of acres. I have that, I had that comment come up to date, so I had to make sure I put that uh, commenter in place that they obviously haven't paid attention. I hunt 52 acres, 40 acres, and 25 acres right now in public land. Um, that's 40 acres with eight acres of cover, 52 with 30 acres of cover, and then 25 with 25 acres of cover. So really small parcel. So I want you to imagine a 40 acre parcel like I would hunt, like a lot of you might hunt, or even smaller. Let's say you really wanted to practice not overpressuring your tree stands. And so over the course of a three day weekend, you had different winds, wind variety, and you could hunt six different stands. Great low pressure practice on each one of those stand locations because you only hit it one time, you hunted the wind, but let's say you were not practicing good scent control efforts on the way in or out of your stand. You didn't overpressure those little dots of stands on your property and the downwind areas that are associated with it, but look at the spider web of access trails going out to each one of those six stands and back. And if you're not practicing good access scent control, then you're gonna be in trouble. You're laying down a big human spider web ascent and that can be really bad. And I'm gonna say that starts at the truck. And now you can see to me, I've had people say, I see you tuck in your boots. You know, I, you tuck the pants into the boots. The reason I do that is I feel that if it's on the outside of the boot, there's two different uh, ways to look at this. On the outside of the boot, every time you step, warm air from in your pants or bibs gets pushed out the bottom. That's the way it can go. Your, your pants are not sealed around your boots. So every step, scent goes out. And so that's an easy way to lay down a human scent trail all the way to your stand and back. Now, when you're on your tree stand, you can make a case that you want your pants on the outside of your boot, and that'll keep your scent from rising, that warm air from inside your boots. It'll stay in your legs, not go out while you're sitting on stand. But I look at it like your most effective form of scent control on stand is locating your stand appropriately. And hunters will say, I've had some comments come up where, well, what about in your, if you're in open hardwoods? Or, you know, where you're at, it's all the same and, and you don't know where deer are coming from. And, you know, and you, you can never say never when it comes to deer. You never know where they're gonna come from, but you have a pretty good idea. And you have a pretty good idea if you're hunting change in habitat and edge. Whitetails are creatures of edge. So the last place I wanna hunt is a big open hardwoods where I have no clue where the deer are coming in. I wanna hunt edge, not because, not just because I can determine where they're traveling better and where to blow my scent, but it's a lot more effective. You can be a lot more effective hunter by hunting edge. And edge is where food's at, edge is where change of habitat's at, edge is where change in elevation is at, change in age of habitat, type of habitat. So there's a lot of things going on with edge and that's where the white tails are, that's where a lot of wildlife's at. And so therefore, when you locate your stands appropriately, you don't have to worry about your downwind as much. And I think a lot of people put a lot more focus into that downwind while they're on tree stand than they actually do worrying about their access trails. Now, you can see this access trail that we have through the goldenrod right here. I'm looking at it like when I go out, I'm tucking my pants into my boots. The exception is if it's raining or snowing, I don't want water going down my boots when they're out there. There's not much you can do about it. But I want to spray down. We use a limit shield. I believe it does work. Um, Dylan's probably showing you a video right now. I had a, a real nice four-year-old eight point. I actually passed him up again twice this morning. I don't know if I should have, but he's a beautiful buck. He might have 12, 13 inch tines. But on last Saturday, he walked right on my access trail for about 50, 60 yards. And I have it on video. He didn't flinch, he didn't move at all. I just walked on that probably an hour and a half earlier and walked into my stand and then I watched him go by. And so I know that if you're practicing good scent control on your legs and your feet then and your boots, and you're not laying down that scent every time you step, then you can control your scent. So starting at the truck, I'm making sure I have clean clothes. I'm dressing outside the truck. And again, I'm not doing this because of when I get to my stand. If you can see the hills behind me, 
these walks lately, if I go up to the top for a morning hut like I did this morning, it's a 33 minute walk from the truck to the bottom of the stand and then it's another you know eight ten minutes to set up i use a can you know put a camera out that kind of thing and um, have my camera arm but uh, it's a 33 minute walk up about 400 feet in elevation so you can imagine how sweaty i am to get into the top what i'm doing when i'm keeping my clothes clean and i'm spraying down with lemon shield or whatever product your favorite product is then i'm making sure that my legs are clean i'm not leaving a scent trail in so that starts with the truck clean clothes dressing outside the truck no matter how cold it is and I just live like right over there I can almost see the roof of my house so I'm not even tempted to jump into the truck and drive over there because I don't know what kind of scents are going to be picked up in the truck I got pizza a couple days ago in the truck I was there for an hour on my way back from Winona so who knows what smells are in the truck it starts with the truck starts with good clean access trails we have some old snowmobile trails up here they're all flattened down so we're not walking through a lot of brush. I'm not just going right through this goldenrod. It's like a sponge just soaking in the scent from every time you touch. I believe that the material right here, and when it's nice and soft, it's like a sponge. Rubber boots, not like a sponge, not very porous, doesn't hold a lot of scent. So last thing I want to do is rub my pants, arms, anything through all the scent. Don't be tempted, let's say the next step, you get halfway up this hill, you think, man, really hot, I'm gonna take my jacket off. A lot of people, and I've hunted with a lot of people like that, you put, put the jacket around your waist, walk up, now the inside of your jacket that was just sweaty, a sweaty, hot mess, when you're walking through the woods, sticks, weeds, shrubs, brush, whatever it might be, rubbing against the inside of that jacket, now you're just laying down a giant scent trail on your way to the stand. Now, when you get to the stand, I use lifelines. I hope you do too. Hunter safety lifelines. They're on all stands. Unfortunately, I didn't start using them until the kids and Diane started hunting uh, a few years ago. And that was, that was a big mistake because it's a huge safety factor and a big, big uh, benefit. But the lifeline, you have the bell that comes down, the clasp and uh, the buckle. And, you, and that comes down. I like to keep that about this level. You know, I can easily reach up to it, attach my safety line to it, my vest and you know, my harness and then go up the tree. I don't want to bring that down if mine's connected down to the base of the tree right down here. I don't want to connect that down at the base so that every deer that goes by that stand after I've sat there two hours after dark, four hours after dark, can smell my sweaty fingerprints from either going up or down the tree and leaving that attachment where I have to attach my safety line two feet from the ground, three feet from the ground where it's right at deer level and they can smell it. I always reach a comfortable height, put it up there. Another thing, if I'm going to change, if I did put my clothes in a backpack, which I don't do, but if I did put my clothes in a backpack and I'm going to change, the last place I want to change is at the base of my stand, where the inside of my clothes, clothes that might be sweaty, clothes that aren't as clean, or I've just sweated through by walking up a hill or walking a long way to the stand, or touching the base of the stand, touching trees around the stand or brush around the stand, I'd rather go up in the tree and then get ready in the tree and, uh, and change out, add a, add a jacket, add a vest, whatever I want to do up there. So first thing I want to do when I get to the tree is go up. I want to reach as high as I can for that safety line. I want to reach as high as I can for the first step. I don't want the more uh, scent absorbing material to scrape against the ladder. And I'd rather just the rubber from my boots, hit the steps, my hands are up here, and then I climb up and that to me you look at the number one scent control fail to me. It isn't people keeping their clothes clean using every type of contraption and dust and gel and spray to make sure that they don't smell when they're on stand. It's what kind of scent trail are you leaving on the way to your stand? Have you eliminated a lot of weedy areas to walk through, lots of areas with sticks and debris? You can walk heel to toe through leaves very quietly and get to a stand. But when you're walking through sticks and they're coming up and banging the side of your legs where there might be some scent or if you're taking off your jacket and you're leaving that scent wicking trail right to your stand when you have your boots on the, your pants on the outside of your boots you're pushing that scent to the ground leaving that you can really destroy a small parcel very quickly even though you're practicing effective tree stand rotation strategy and management and you're keeping the pressure low on those stands, really think about that spider web 
of human scent that you could lay across a small parcel, even just hunting a handful of stands throughout a long weekend. And then that accumulation of scent, boy, the, the one time that target buck comes by and smells that scent around your stand, you know, he's not coming back for two or three weeks, few weeks, whatever it is, he's not gonna come back the next day, that's for sure, next few days. And when we get into the rut like we're at right now, the time is ever shrinking, even though we might have a couple weeks of really good rut hunting right now, 12 days, whatever it is. You can't afford to spook a deer right now that might not come back till after the rut. Hope this makes a lot of sense. I hope you like these strategies. I really hope you uh, subscribe to the channel. We try to show, Dylan puts a lot of great footage in there of bucks that we see when we're on stand or our trail cam photos or mock scrape. But uh, this is uh, for hardcore information for strategy, whitetail strategy from habitat to hunting. I hope you like it, I hope you subscribe. I really appreciate your watching. I love this YouTube community and I appreciate it. Thank you very much.